the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. I want to go ahead and give you a quick uh, uh, synopsis of what we talked about today. And I, and I, I changed the topic because I've started off with the kind of topic called to be two types of churches, the those that obey Christ and those that disobey Christ. And I changed it more to line up with the scriptures so that people, if they're going to discuss it and debate it, they can at least line up with what scripture I'm coming from. And I'm coming from Romans chapter 8. I'm talking about verse 6. Where it's talking about the being caught in the mind of spiritual light. So this is what I want to do, and and because what I've seen so much, and I think most of them agree now, we have become so comfortable. You know, I can't say we have, because I see based on history that we have done card we've been acting on the cardinal flesh and cardinal reality for a very long time. But it's called two types of Christians, spiritual minded and cardinal minded. That verse that goes to that is Romans 8, 6. So when you talk to your pastor and you talk to your minister, you talk to your fellow believers, you ask you, you what I want you to do is assess whether you are cardinal. Are you cardinal Christians? And then what I do encourage you to do, what we talked about today was Google, go do word search, go to the library, have you want to say, look up the atrocities first of religion, religious people or religion and how much religion has uh, driven people to do mass killing and murders and torture and some very inhumane things. And then if you want to talk about the, the, the our Christianity itself, then you go and look up look up the atrocities of Christians and you'll see that we, we got to, and you know it, starting from the crusade all the way to the transatlantic slave trade, all the way to the slavery all the way through the Jim Crow laws and all those things and all the way to this day we see where people have dehumanized people to justify the behavior. Now we're seeing it even between political parties where somebody is sitting there just because you're part of this party uh, we're going to hurt you, we're going to kill you, we're going to dehumanize you. Both sides to a degree but one side in particular is really putting down uh, a lot of rhetoric of talking about physically hurting somebody. Uh, even in Christianity, we talked about the fact that the evangelicals and so forth talking about abortion with the with the the inciting people to go blow up abortion clinics and and then put uh, pregnant women or women who commit abo ador uh, abortion put them in jail. You know, it, it's just a lot of things that people would do in the name of their faith, their religion, and in our case, Christianity. So we need to fit there and say, do we need to operate and try to deal with things from the cardinal level or from the spiritual level? You know, God is the spirit in John 4, 24. God is the spirit, and those who worship him must worship his spirit in truth. And we've been called to preach the good news, not be militant. And we talked about the fact is that even uh, Christianity did not start off, nor is it nor are the teachings of Christ about violence. But when Rome took over and the church was accepted as the same religion, it became a banner also to be more militant. And that's where the crusade came in. And the viciousness and the, the, the terrible thing that was done in the crusade, look it up and read it for yourself. We, as believers, we, it's time for us to let our light shine and show people who are the real Christians. Meaning, and I'm talking about spiritual Christians. We have spiritual-minded Christians, not cardinal-minded. So real quick, I want to go ahead and read the, uh, the scripture I'm coming from, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and get into the study. So right here, like I said, two types of Christians, spiritual-minded and cardinal-minded, coming from Romans 8, 6. But let's go ahead into those scriptures. I want to read it real quick. Uh, it's like this. Romans 1, 8, I mean, Romans 8, 1, all the way to 8, 6, is what I like to read as, as the foundation where I'm coming from. He said, there therefore no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus, walking after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and it was weak to the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, listen y'all, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the date on the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Now, what I'm trying to say, if you look at what we just read, and you go back and read it for yourself, all the things from the lynching, all the things from the slave trade, all the things from the crusade, all the things leading them to the day. If you call yourself a Christian, if you use any cardinal weapons, any fleshly tools to try to make somebody be a Christian, to try to make somebody line up to be righteous, to make somebody to be what you think they're supposed to be as far as being holy, you can't do it because cardinal tools does not make you holy. Is only the spirit, the righteousness of Christ that's given to you as a gift. And if it's given to you as a gift, and the only thing for other people to do is receive the gift or continue to be what they are. But you are not cardinal. Remember that, amen? I hope you enjoyed the study. And listen to these introductions more than anything else because that's what we're trying to come to. Let's stop being cardinal Christians and let's stop being spiritual Christians. Amen? God bless you. God loves you. I will go ahead and make the, uh, the session available next, buy them up in uh, A, B, and C, and D. And also, I'll go ahead and make sure that you uh, get these out as soon as possible for you can digest them one day at a time or every other day. And also, remember this, subscribe. And, and make comments, too. I'll receive them. I, I mean, at least I'll, I'll read them. <laughs> God bless you. Take care. I don't want to go to this Deuteronomy 8, 17. And thou shalt say in thy heart, my power and the might of my hands have gotten me this wealth. For thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. You know, that we time to say, God so loved the world, they gave his only begotten son. But if you believe, don't believe in him, and just want to put on the coat, the title of Christianity, uh, uh, he said, you shall surely perish. You got to do it the way he told you. John 14, 6, as I said it before, Jesus said unto John, on the way to truth and life, no one comes to follow but by me. Jeremiah 75 said, Thus says the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusts in man, his political body, his doctrine, a person. He said, And make his, his flesh, make flesh his arm, mean his strength and who heart departed from the Lord. Have you departed from the Lord to follow your party, to follow the color of your skin, to follow your nationality, to follow your principles? Have you departed from the Lord? Have you departed from this will? Because if you have, then you, you, you're gonna have to give an account for it. And you say how he's gonna justify it. That's, that's the decision you gotta make. You really do. You gotta make that decision. Because 17 7 says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, who hope the Lord is. Who's, who are you trusting? 
woman friend told me, say, I, I, I want to hear what, I want to hear the truth that I want to hear. Listen to what he just said. I want to hear the truth that God has, that the word of God has, right? Now, if you want to, this is, this is a question. Did you, when you made this confession, if you made it as you're a believer, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Lord means he's the one you follow. Not your political party, not a person, but him. Are you, did you follow him? Do you follow the Lord Jesus? Who are you following? You profess you follow the Lord Jesus. That means you made him Lord of your life, not people, not yourself. Not the devil, but him. And you and you believe in our heart that God is raised from the dead. That same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead is the same power that can save you. But you got to go and let him be Lord. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, meaning your spirit, not your mind, not your cardinal flesh, but your spirit, man, believes into righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made of salvation. Listen, this is not a game. I know politics have made it a game. I know racism has made it a game. But in the end, you either play God's will or man's will. Man's will won't give you eternal life. And if you don't believe in eternal life, then do like my buddy said. You can just, just do your thing. But if you do believe in eternal life, have faith in eternal life, then do what God says. Do what God's will says. Okay. Look at this. In Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that says unto me, this is Christ talking. Christ is saying this. And that's what I'm trying to tell you too. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Once again, it goes back to the Lord's prayer. Thy will be done. He's telling you, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. He's not, he that does the will of my earthly father or my brother or my sister or whoever. Not them, but his will, right? Because he says in 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in thy name? In thy name cast out devils. In thy name done wonderful works. You sitting there saying is that you doing wonderful works from racism and everything else, you doing, you doing wonderful works from political party affiliations. You doing wonderful works. You, you may be doing work for man, but you're not doing work for God. Because it ends with like, what did you do for him? Not for what you did for your political party. Did you obey God's will or did you obey man's will? Do you play, did you obey God's will or you play, obey your political party's will? Did you obey God's will or did you obey your nationality will? Did you obey God's will? Because you got to give an account to him. That's why you want to study the word of God. Look at this. He said in 23, and then I'm confessing him, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, when you sat there and endorsed racism, and you hated somebody, and taught your children to hate somebody, boy, you need to sit there and ask yourself, well, how, what am I going to do when I give my account to God? Because I know I got to prove for man, but what am I going to do when I got to give an account to God? That's for me, that's for you. What are you gonna do when you gotta give an account? Because that's what matters. That's what matters. And it's not too late. You can turn around anytime you want, but you gotta turn around. And you gotta face him because he is who matters. You know, John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but of everlasting life. It's the goal is eternal life. Now, it's by faith that you believe in eternal life. If you don't believe, you don't know that there's eternal life, and yet you make a decision, now I'm going to do what I want to do because I don't believe in eternal life. We all still got to give an account to God. We all going to take that dirt nap without the way you think, and then you'll find out for yourself. So you have faith in yourself, you can have faith in fellow man, or you have faith in God. You make that choice. You say in John 13, 34, he said, a new commandment I give unto you. This is those who said and profess themselves to be Christian. This is, this is what we're talking about, those who are Christian. 
I've given to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. This is what this is what Christ told us to do. So if you sit there and say, Well, Lord, I, I didn't I didn't have to love a property. I didn't have to love an inferior person. I didn't have to love uh, um, a human being that is not my party affiliation. He's gonna go back and say, I never knew you. You can ask, you can take it to your priest, you can take it to your pastor. And you can tell them, say, is it all right to hate? Is it all right to, 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 to commit adultery? Is it all right to discriminate? Is it all right to do the works of the flesh to a people that's not human or subhuman? Is it all right? Come on, show me. Show me the scripture where it's okay in the gospel because I'm a Christian. So show me in the gospel that it's okay for me to do bad things to poverty, to people of color skin to people with this nationality, to, to people that are white. You tell me. When you go find a scripture to do bad things and find us justified. He says right here in 35, by this shall all men know, that means all men will see that you are his disciples if you have loved one another. Because the world's watching you. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Not only is God watching you, <laughs> the world is watching you. And if you're doing those things, you got to watch out. He said, uh, John 14, 15, he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. His commandments to love one another. I hope, the, you, I hope you get that. John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said to them, If a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our bold with him. He will keep our words. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. I have come that they might have light, and they might have life more abundantly. So are you part of the killing, destroying, or are you part of the abundant living in Christ? You choose. I know some, some are going to say, well, see, I'm justifying my uh, destruction toward other people. But you still got to give an account to God. You call yourself all you want out. You, you better ask your pastor. Pastor, pastor, do I got to give account to God? Do I got to give account to Christ? Do I, do I have to do that? He's going to have to tell you yes. And we'll wrap up with this. Because not only with two, not only is the question of you, what church are you in? Are you a church of man Christ or a church of man man? Is this, this led to see a church here? There were seven churches that were in the book of Revelation. Let's talk, I just want to talk about this one. And we'll wrap up with this one. Because <laughs> look, 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 look. What type of church are you? What type of church are you as an individual? Because it matters what you, it matters your decision. You're a big boy, you're a big girl. It's your decision. What type of church are you? Are you a church that obeys Christ? Or are you a church that disobeys Christ? What type of church are you? And I'm talking about when you, and I suggest again, look up the history of the church, or not the church, but people that call themselves the church, and ask yourself, are you part of them, or are you part of the gospel? You're part of Christ, or you're part of man? You're part of Christ, or you're part of political party? What part are you? You've got to make that decision because you're going to give an account to God based on the decision you make. Amen? So let's go ahead and wrap this up. The fact is, it's all about reflection, all about analyzing. So let's analyze this. What type of church are you? A bad price or not? Look at this. This is the church of Laodicea. And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea write, These things says the amen, the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God. This, you, you hear me now, right? I know that works. And most of you sit there, those who did all the bad things in the past. I mean, you have some people actually make postcards of, of, of lynching and send it back home like they, they they did a great thing. I wonder if they ever thought about going to God in prayer. I said, Lord, didn't I do a great thing killing that person or endorsing and killing that person? You know, you know, they, they, they got a different color than me, Lord. So I, I knew I did the right thing, right, Lord? 
you know, true. He's talking about the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, meaning God created a human being, whether you like it or not, whether you label son or not, God created a human being. I know that works. Thou neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, and I am rich and increased with good and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. The children, the Jew, I mean, Eve and Adam were naked in the garden. And they hid themselves. This church is sitting there saying, is, I did all the atrocities to get what I wanted. I, I enslaved people. I beat people. I try to commit genocides for people. In the modern day time, I sit there and hate people. The red, red line, destroying of people, discriminate against people. I did all of those things. And basically, they have needed nothing. But what Christ say? I counsel thee. <laughs> Glory to God. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried and buy it. That thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eyes that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. He that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. What type of church are you? is what you have to ask that question. What type of church are you? Are your church doing the will of the Father or are your church doing the will of man? Are you lukewarm? Are you hot toward the things of God or cold toward the things of God? Those are the choices you're going to make. That's what it's all about. That's a word called reflection daily. You, me, daily. Talk about a church. We talk about the parable of, of the hospital. And the fact is that when you go into assembly, you do go into where people are trying to be healed and be whole. The people who are just like a hospital, they go in to be healed, they go in to, to, to recover, and then they will them out till they get them in a car for them to continue their healing process, but do it at home. Do you go to church facilities to do the will of the Father? And are your church teaching you to do the will of the Father or the will of the political party? But that's something some preachers are doing. Are you sitting there saying it's okay to call somebody inferior because that, that makes you feel good, but you still got to give the count of time? That's all we're trying to say, amen? Hey, I enjoyed this time. I, I pray that you enjoyed it as well. Uh, take time to digest it. We'll go ahead and... Uh, which is from A to B, you know, uh, C, and uh, just, just, just look at the history of, of look it up. All you have to do, look at the atrocities of religion, look at the atrocities of Christianity, the atrocities, bad things. Ooh. Pray for the children, children of the people who did bad things and pray that they follow Christ and I pray that you follow Christ all you have to do is repent you gotta repent to man you repent to God but the question is he said I'm the way the truth and life no one can follow but by me go ahead put your bad self you're gonna go any other way but you're not going to have eternal life that's that's what the scripture says amen alright well God bless you I enjoy talking to you uh, we pray for Brother Addison and for Traveling Mercy, where he's at. 
and uh, all the other brothers out there that made or didn't make it, <laughs> we'll, give, we'll give them a shout out, all right? God bless you, and I'll see you, and I'll see you. <laughs> Bye. Close it out. <laughs> what type of church are you? I want to sit there and invite you to listen to the study carefully. And I also want to invite you to look up the history of religion. And I'm talking about look at the atrocities of religion. Look at the atrocity of the Christian church. Look them up because there's a lot. And why I'm saying that, the Bible says that a tree is known by his fruit. What fruit are you bearing? That's what we want to discuss. And, and keep in mind, you can always change, revert back, repent, and follow the will of God. So even if you have a history, bad things, you can always come back to the throne of grace. Because that's what the gospel is all about. So I want you to take time, to listen to the study, analyze it for yourself, and ask what type of church are you? We got to the point where we actually used, went to the book of Revelation to the church of Laodicea and what that church was like. And the question is, are you like that church? But if you believe and you want to believe, follow his will. He gave you the, he gave you the Lord's commandment so you can follow his will daily. Amen. All right. God bless you. I see you. Don't forget to subscribe. And, and I will break these down into segments A, B, C, D, and whatever it takes to finish it up. But I just want you to analyze it. And like I said, I just want to put out there to you. If you decide that you don't want to believe Christ, if you decide that you don't believe in eternal life, that's a choice you make. And we respect your choice because you make that choice. All we all tell you is that everyone will give every look. My scripture said by faith. That's all I can go by faith. In his word. Is that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So you say it now or you say it when you leave this world. That's up to you. God bless you, but I chose to do it now. Make that decision now. I encourage everybody else to make that decision now as well. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the segment, the study that we did this Sunday on the 9th of July. And say, look, Yeshua, Jesus is Lord. Amen? Amen. God bless you. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.